Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy and welcome to part 18 of my Logic Pro 11 Essentials course. In this video, I want to introduce you to a really nifty and handy recording function called cycle recording, uh, also known as loop recording. What this does is it allows you to set a range where you want to record and the recording will just continue looping that range indefinitely until you hit the space bar. So I find this really helpful if you're recording by yourself and you want to, uh, you know, get three, four, five or more takes if you're doing vocal vocals or if you're recording acoustic guitar, really anything, you know, making any audio recording with a microphone. Or if you are a guitar player and you're plugged in DI and using amp sims, or maybe you've got your amplifier mic'd up and you want to record and improvise a guitar solo. I find this is one of the best ways to record guitar solos because you can just like you can go into a recording like this with nothing in your head and start improving and slowly over five, six, seven, ten takes, you put something together that works and each of of those takes that are recorded during the cycle of recording will be stored in a take folder and you can comp them later. So off screen, I took my uh, demo song here. I, I sort of extended the verse section here one more time and I want to put like a little, you know, a little guitar solo in here. And so what I'll do is I'll create a new audio track. I'll label this guitar solo. I'll figure out some sort of an amp tone to throw on here. Uh, but I will go ahead and throw Amp Designer on here for now. And then just in theory, let me show you how this works first before I actually play anything. So first we need to set up the recording settings for this. So go up to Logic Pro Settings Recording. And from here under Overlapping Track Recordings Audio, for Cycle On, you want to make sure that this is set to Create Take Folder. In a previous video, I, I told you to set Create Take Folder for both of these, um, so it's highly likely that this is already the option. But when Cycle is on, you want to still uh, create Take Folders. There are other options. You can create separate tracks if you want. You can create track alternatives if you prefer uh, using those. Uh, but that's the setting you want to create Take folders. And then what you do is you just create a cycle range up here that you want to record on. Uh, make sure that your track has an input. My guitar is going to be coming into input two. And watch what happens when I hit R to record on this track. So each pass is creating a different take, one, two, and three, and you can still comp these together using quick swipe comping. Now I'm gonna be doing this on a much larger scale because we're gonna do this for eight bars, but what I highly recommend you do is give yourself at least one or two bars of lead out time and at least one or two bars of lead in time. This is going to help you out big time because this will give you some time to sort of, you know, find an ending point. If you've got notes that are sustaining, it gives those notes a, a chance to fully sustain. And it just kind of gives you a second to get your bearings and sort of get set up for the next pass, the next take. So let me take just a moment and dial in an amp setting using Amp Designer that I like for a lead tone. I need to take a quick break and tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Boombox. Boombox is the ultimate collaboration platform for musicians, producers, and mixing engineers, anyone who wants to make music and collaborate with others. You get secure file storage for your tracks, multi-tracks, and stems, and even full DAW sessions. You can then invite collaborators to your project where they can leave time-stamped feedback on your tracks. You can even create your own custom inbox where clients can upload their files directly to your Boombox account. They also have a suite of AI tools, including a stem splitter, MIDI chord generator, and it can even assist you with writing lyrics. If you're looking to get your music out there, you can create your own custom artist page to share your music with the world and mark yourself for hire if you're looking to get paid gigs. They also have a mobile app so you can manage your projects on the go, and the Boombox Sync app for macOS allows you to upload files directly from your desktop. If you want to check out Boombox for yourself, head over to boombox.io today and sign up to get four gigabytes of free storage. 
Okay, so off screen, I set up an amp setting that I liked for a lead tone. I'm using this sort of Marshall head with a 1x12 cab with a ribbon mic. Uh, before that, I've also added a noise gate. This is just going to get rid of any buzz or hum in my signal. The guitar I'm using is quite a buzzy guitar without the gate here. And then before that, I'm using the high drive pedal. And one of the cool things about the later versions of Logic, the newer versions, I think this is in 10.7 and 10.8 as well, is you can load up individual pedals uh, under the stomp box category rather than having to load up the entire pedal board. Um, so if you just want to throw one pedal on there, that's an easy way to do that. So this is the high drive pedal is just giving me a little bit of a, a boost on input, just to give me a little more gain. One other thing I want to bring up in this video is low latency monitoring mode. This is going to be your best friend if you have a project that is already big, you've got your buffer size, you know, down at the lowest setting and you're still hearing latency. It probably means one or more of your plugins or your send routings are causing latency. And you can get around this by using low latency monitoring mode. To show this, just right click or control click up here select customize control bar and display and make sure that low latency monitoring mode is shown and then just turn it on and you should get the minimum amount of latency possible for your setup. Now I have not prepared much for this uh, example. I'm also horrible at soloing in major keys. So I'm just gonna hit record and I'm gonna do several passes and then we'll come back and we'll comp them together. I'm not going to make you listen to all of my takes. I'll just kind of show you a few different takes um, through the recording process. And then we'll get to the end where we have all of the takes stacked up in a take folder. So rough take, we just let this run to the end and it jumps back to 17. Another botched take, so I'm just gonna keep going until I get a few uh, that are decent. Okay, so after all of that, I ended up with 28 takes. I know that seems insane, but when you're improving, you know, the first half of the takes usually end up just being junk and unusable. And then, well, unless you're really good at improving. And then by the end of the sort of improv session, the ideas start to come together and you get more of a cohesive idea and you can start to replicate that idea consistently. So for me, the best takes I had were takes 21 through 27. And uh, in particular, 24 and 25 were really good. So what I did is I went through with quick swipe comping and I start on take 24. I borrowed just this one note from 25 because I botched that note in 24. Grabbed just these two notes from 24 and then jumped up to 25. And that's the great thing about this. If you got a botched note here or there, you can use the quick swipe comping to bring in just even one note. You just have to remember when you edit, try to edit in between the waveforms and before transients. You don't want to edit like this. You don't want to edit like this. Try to edit very close to the transients 
in between the waveforms where the energy is, you know, the lowest. So let's give this whole thing a listen. A couple other things I did off screen. I pulled down the high drive a little bit. It was a bit much. And then in the amp, I swapped out the cab for a different cab that was a little warmer. Uh, I also turned on the reverb and the vibrato effect on the amp. So let's give this a listen uh, now with the solo comped. If you're brand new to comping and using take folders, go back and check out part 14 of this course where I demonstrate how to use take folders and quick swipe comping with vocal recordings, but the process is exactly the same for really any instrument. Once you're done comping your part, you can click right here and then you can select flatten and merge. And this will consolidate all of those edits and all of those takes down into a single audio region. However, if for some reason you want to save this take folder for later, maybe you decide later on down in the process you want to swap out a section or recomp the guitar. One way I've shown in a previous video is to duplicate this track and then just hide the track with the take folder on it. Another way to do this is to go up to track and then show your track alternatives and you'll see this little menu shows up on each of the tracks. Duplicate your take folder track, and what you'll see now is you have two different alternatives, A and B. So B is where I'm going to leave the take folder, and A is where I'm going to flatten and merge. And because I flattened and merged, now I can trim this up and I can edit it just like any other audio region. But if for some reason I want to go back and grab that take folder, all I have to do is go to track alternative B and there it is. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.